but right now I want to welcome to the program the man himself, Mr. Ted Nugent. Ted, good evening to you, sir. A glowing pre-springtime salute to you, Cam, and I'll tell you, uh, a ditto, a mega logic truth celebration ditto uh, to the good Wayne LaPierre and Chris Cox. They certainly speak for the Nugent family and all the uh, responsible gun owners and NRA members that I know, but it's important once again that everyone listening, don't just nod your head and salute the sky with a clenched fist. Call your senator. You have to call your elected officials, your senator, your congressman. Call your governor. Call your mayor. Let it be known far and wide, loud and proud, that the letter from Wayne LaPierre and Chris Cox on behalf of the National Rifle Association is the stand of good families everywhere. I have been in this activism game all of my adult life, Cam. Yeah. And when a politician hears from the voice of a group or an organization, it means one thing. When they hear a statement from the voice of an organization or a group, and then it's followed up by the members, the families that concur with those stated conclusions, we're talking <laughs> Apples and grenades. We're talking an impact versus a controlling statement. So everyone listening right now to NRA News, to Cam Edwards and Cam and Company, you have to follow up. This is serious business. The left, the gun grabbers, the president, and his Mao Zedong fan club gun grabbers have been strategizing and planning anything, anywhere, anytime, anyhow, to start going after our Second Amendment rights with a vengeance. Know it, be assured of it, and if we let them, it won't be their fault, it will be our fault. I'd like to think that the battle cry remains alive and well for freedom, liberty, individual freedoms, and certainly the God-given individual rights is outlined in the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And if we do not articulate that, if we do not email, call, and write, and impact all of our elected officials with what your family believes in, then the enemy will trample us like the wimps that we might be. I don't believe we are wimps, but if we let them go after any of our bullet rights, any of our gun rights, any of our Second Amendment rights, and they win, we deserve it, Cam. Ted, I'm not going to disagree with you. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, as we talked last week, if your elected officials don't know who you are, you're doing it wrong. And they, this is certainly, you know, look, you, you see Paul Helmke's statement today, uh, and Helmke says this is the strongest statement that a, a president has made on gun control. Uh, in over a decade. Well, you know, eight of those years you had uh, President Bush in office. Uh, and, you know, the Brady campaign has said they've given uh, Barack Obama a failing grade for not doing enough on their issue over the past couple of years. I, I think, frankly, this may be the strongest statement a, a president has made on gun control since Bill Clinton said the reason we got hammered in the 94 midterms is because we went after guns. I, you know, th this is really the first time in 16 years, Ted, that you have had uh, a president decide, all right, you know what, we're going to go after uh, the rights of gun owners. We're going we're gonna to have this conversation. Well, there's been an indication uh, across America, and again, it's manifested itself in the uh, dire conditions that we're facing economically, socially, politically in this country. And once again, uh, I mean the words I use. I choose them intentionally. We have a government that is infiltrated, if not downright infested, with people that do not like America. They do not like capitalism. And when you have the Van Joneses and the Czars and the Cass Sunsteins and the list of Czars and people in the administration of Barack Obama who have literally come out publicly in praising Mao Zedong, communism and socialism, when the President of the United States quotes the Socialist Manifesto that we have to spread the wealth around, that his response to the uh, catastrophe in the Gulf, the oil spill, was to shut down the exploration of more energy resources while people from foreign countries are researching those same energies 
in our Gulf, or at the ex- ex- extent of our Gulf, when he claims out of one side of his mouth that he wants America to pursue energy independence and get out from underneath the shackles and control of foreign oil and then shuts down the exploration of energy resources by the United States, who doesn't get this? My point being that all things freedom, all things U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights are absolutely being assaulted by the Barack Obama administration, senators and congressmen, mostly Democrats across this country, and some culpable rhinos out there, Republican and name only. And if we the people allow them to continue with their abuse of power, with their corruption, with their anti-American ways, if we the people let them, then we're going to get what we ask for. And at this point on NRA News Cam, I want to salute everyone out there who is an activist. I don't believe there's a better representative of the we the people American dream in this country than NRA members. We have made our statement better than any element of the American society, and I salute you. But we're not doing it good enough yet. We all know NRA members. We all know fellow gun owners. We all know fellow hunters. We all know fellow freedom lovers that are not members of the NRA, that wouldn't know their mayor from Jeffrey Dahmer, that don't communicate with their elected officials, and that are basically a lump on the log. We need to educate these people in our lives. We need to scold them and prod them and wake them up that they're being trampled underfoot by people who do not like America, who state publicly that they don't like America, that they want to fundamentally transform America into something more like Indonesia. And all you have to do is follow the money. You just have to follow their words, follow their background, see where they were educated, see what their statements have been, what their voting record has been. And we have to follow up with Wayne LaPierre and Chris Cox's letter to the president. We have to stand up constantly. I don't mean just one letter, one phone call. We have to wallpaper and carpet bomb like the majority of real activists in the NRA. The, my, my blood brothers on our TedNugent.com talk back, all of them are wallpaper, carpet bomb activists communicating with elected officials and their family and friends and co-workers, friends at church and school, on the streets of this country. Activism is the new battle cry for getting back to the American way, getting back to the U.S. Constitution, getting back to our state's constitutions, and getting back to the American dream of we the people as individuals with liberty and justice for all. This is the time. This is our tsunami where we're either going to stand up for freedom or we're going to be washed away by those people who don't believe in freedom. We are talking with Ted Nugent this hour. We want to hear from you after the break. 1-866-NRA-NEWS. 866-672-6397 is the number to call. You can email Ted at NRANews.com. You can go to Twitter.com slash NRANews. You can post a question on our Facebook page. You can send us a talk back. So many different ways to communicate. Uh, Ted, we're going to take a, a quick time out, but when we come back, we're going to uh, hear from the uh, folks listening in uh, on the road and at home this evening, at work as well, I am sure. Keep it right here. We are just getting started with Mr. Ted Nugent on this Monday edition of Cam & Company on NRANews.com and Sirius XM Patriot. Well, that sounds like a new Ted Nugent song. Mr. Nugent is uh, with us this hour. We're going to get to your phone calls and talkbacks here momentarily. Ted, what are we listening to? I still believe in the American dream. I still believe in the American dream. I still believe you can hear me scream. It's still alive. It's on fire. I defy. It ain't no lie. It's a it's a great rock and roll recording that we just captured this week in the studio. In fact, Cam, I invite everybody listening right now to NRA News that you can get a free download of this outrageous rock out. I still believe at TedNugent.com right now, and everybody's very very excited about it, man. Awesome. All right, uh, let, let's go to the phones here at one eight six six NRA News. 866-672-6397. Scott is in Michigan tonight. Scott, good evening, sir. Greetings, Scott. Good evening, Mr. Nugent and uh, Cam. I, I, I'm, I'm fired. Just I'm excited right now. Well, good. I'm glad you called in. What's on your mind, Scott? You know, that letter first off that was sent to President Obama, Yeah. if he, if he actually read it, 
I would love to be a fly on the wall to see the look on his face when he realizes how many millions of Americans are going to fight for, for our Second Amendment right. Stand up to everybody and try and you know, make sure that we keep our guns. Absolutely. Well, it's a great statement. You know, once again, the National Rifle Association, Scott, I, I hope that you're a member and everybody in your family and all your buddies are members, especially in the great state of Michigan, because with the good Governor Rick Snyder and the good Governor Mike Co- uh, Attorney General Mike Cox and some great, great, real constitutionalists still in Michigan politics, uh, like across America, we the people are letting our voices be heard. And if we don't follow up with the self-evident truth and the logic and the common sense and the evidence that Wayne LaPierre and Chris Cox stated in that letter on behalf of the membership of the NRA and freedom lovers everywhere, if we don't follow up with it, I can tell you what the fly in the wall in Barack Obama's office is going to see. He's going to see a guy snicker. He's going to snicker at the NRA. He's going to snicker at people that cling to their guns and their religion. He's going to snicker at people that want to work really hard and get up extra early and create jobs and create revenues and create the American dream opportunities for people. And if he snickers, it's because he believes that most of us will be asleep and we won't follow up on the self-evident truth and the common sense in Wayne LaPierre and Chris Cox's letter. So I hope you, Scott, in my home state of Michigan, I hope we raise some hell with our elected officials and communicate consistently and constantly to make sure that the voice is heard. Leave our damn guns alone. It's the criminal, stupid. Amen. Amen. Uh, Mr. Nugent, what you do for us as NRA members, as Americans, God bless you. God bless America. And we're going to fight till the end and you know, oh, yes. <laughs> Scott, stay that fired up, man. We well, appreciate the uh, phone call, sir. Spoken like a true Michiganian. <laughs> There's a lot of passion where I come from. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Let's let's uh, stay with the phones here. Brian is in Oregon tonight. Brian, good evening, sir. Green is Brian. Ed, Brian Healy from Oregon. How I know you, my friend. Five. Good hearing from you. Hey, uh, my daughter, Deanna, who you've met, was asked an incredibly... Uh, interesting question by a public school to write an essay. Question being, why should she care that that nine-year-old girl was shot in that Tucson tragedy? And my gut feeling was that it was coming from a very very liberal-leaning gun control type situation. And uh, I just wanted to get your take on on a, a question like that. <laughs> Well, you know, will... there are no answers that would satisfy uh, logic or decency or goodwill or the the operating procedure of the vast majority of human beings, especially here in America. There's no rhyme or reason why innocent lives are ever snuffed out, regardless of age, regardless of walk of life. There's never a meaningful or gratifying or satisfying explanation why evil can destroy lives at the drop of a hat like that. But remember, whether it's in Tucson, Arizona, whether it's in Chicago this weekend, whether it's in Detroit within the next hour, evil will have its way because of a failed court system, because recidivism is a direct result of judges and attorneys and courts who don't really care about justice, who who don't care about crime and punishment, who don't care about saving and protecting innocent lives. They're only interested in some strange, weird procedure that takes place in these places we call courtrooms in this country, where guilty monsters are constantly paroled and early released and plea bargained out into the streets where they can do what they want. And as clearly stated by Wayne LaPierre and Chris Cox in our letter from the NRA to the president, we have a failed system not only in the courts, but where, where, where most of these shooters run through and then they're not controlled, they're not uh, put in cages where they belong. They're let run free because the court system and the mental, uh, the mental health community and mental health situations and uh, procedures in this country are full of holes. They're incomplete, they're inconsistent, and they're ineffective and inefficient. And once again, Brian, you know that on TalkBack, all our blood brothers at TedNugent.com TalkBack, we have a lot of work cut out for us. 
whether it's stopping the president from taking our guns, getting the wolf delisted from the Endangered Species Act, saving our wildlife out west, or just protecting our children from recidivism and from the, the system by which paroled rapists and child molesters are knowingly let loose into our communities when it's been proven that they will repeat their crimes against children 100% of the time if they're not in a cage. We have our work cut out for us, and it's always going to be about activism, activism, activism. But we also have to teach our children, our friends in life, our families, our coworkers, to be more cognizant of their surroundings, to pay more attention of their surroundings. And when we see aberrant behavior, dangerous behavior, rude behavior, violent behavior, suspicious behavior, we got to start blowing more whistles in this country. we got to raise more hell and put more spotlights on more cockroaches so that those of us who do know better can demand that some type of reasonable procedure is put into place and that these dangerous people are kept out of our shopping malls, kept out of our schools, kept out of our neighborhoods. And it's going to take we the people to raise enough hell to fix all these situations that need fixing in this country. Amen, brother. That's why we love you right there. Well, Godspeed, Brian. Good hearing from you. Hey, Brian. Thanks so much for the uh, phone call, sir. Uh, All right. In the uh, talk bags tonight at uh, nranews.com, Steve in York, PA, says, Cam, can you ask Uncle Ted as a uh, Hunter Ed instructor if he remembers taking his uh, Hunter education course? I've been instructing for about 35 years, says Steve. Well, God bless uh, Steve. You said Steve, right? Yep. Yeah, Steve in York, Pennsylvania, that's the home of Bob Fulcrod, one of the the world's greatest hunters and greatest sportsmen. And Pennsylvania, you know, is the number one deer hunting state in the nation, Cam, with over 900,000 deer hunters. So God bless the Keystone State. God bless my blood brothers in Pennsylvania. And God bless Steve and all those incredible volunteers who sacrifice so much because the hunter education system in this country has done just wonderful, wonderful God's work, and we've had safer hunting seasons year after year after year, getting safer all the time, and these hunter safety instructors volunteer their time, Cam. So a huge heartfelt salute to all the volunteers for the hunter safety programs. I'm actually a a certified hunter safety instructor myself, and because of my age, I never actually attended a hunter safety course uh, because when it was implemented by law, I was already above the minimum age, which, by the way, as I approach my 63rd birthday, I think I'm above all minimum ages now. (laughs) I think I am the, the benchmark for old rock and roll deer hunters. But I do teach hunter safety. I think it's important, but I also want to salute the different game agencies, including Pennsylvania to some degree, that are now implementing these mentor programs where a young boy or girl does not have to go through hunter safety and get that certificate as long as they're mentored and in the supervised control of a certified uh, a graduate of hunter safety. I believe the uh, it's also a minimum age of 21, but an adult supervisor. Uh, to mentor these children into the outdoors, even before they reach what in many states is a minimum age to go hunting. So once again, we're on our way. I started raising that hell a long time ago, that minimum age should not be a government decision, but rather a family decision. And it's worked out everywhere that that has been implemented. Where they got rid of the minimum age for hunting, it became safer. We get better recruitment. There's better family hours of recreation that is very, very powerful for all of us. And I would encourage people like Steve in York, Pennsylvania, and everywhere else out there to communicate to eliminate the minimum age for hunting, implement these mentor programs, and uh, and encourage everyone we know to take the hunter safety course as soon as possible. All right. Uh, let's go to the phone. Lori is in Michigan this evening. Lori, good evening. Greetings, Lori. Hi, how are you? Excellent. Thanks for the phone call. Well, I'm a daughter of a family of Marines, expert shooting Marines and lifelong members of the NRA. And my father always told me that, you know, guns don't kill people. People kill people. And a criminal is going to find a way to do it no matter what. And uh, here in the state of Michigan, I'll tell you, we need our guns. We have wildlife running through our backyard. We have coyotes. We have bobcats. We, we, we need to not only defend our, our, ourselves from, from violators, but we need to defend ourselves from these wild animals that are now running rampage because people are throwing them into the population thinking, oh, they're not going to reproduce. They're not going to hurt people. They're not going to hurt animals. Well, every other day here in, in, in the area of Michigan I am, there's, there's animal attacks. Well, we need to defend ourselves in many ways. And um, 
go after the criminals. And I'm a huge advocate for not only hunter safety, but just gun safety. It's very understanding that people are afraid of guns. And Lori, rather than being opposed to the amend- Second Amendment, learn some safety rules. Well, Lori, you speak like a good, powerful Michiganian. God bless my fellow <laughs> Michiganians back there. And you know, uh, Semper Fi to your entire family of Chesty Puller fans. Um, God bless the U.S. Marine Corps. They are the greatest heroes that have ever walked this earth. And for not the sacrifices of the U.S. Marine Corps and all the heroes in the U.S. military, we would not have an American dream. So simplify to them all. But in Michigan, you know, we have an increasing and expanding bear population, confirmed uh, cougar populations. There is an absolute historical, irrefutable need and responsibility to be armed. And with the good attorney general in the state of Michigan, Mike Cox, this guy is a real Marine hero. This guy is the constitutionalist, both Michigan and U.S. Constitution. So, Lori, be sure you communicate with Mike Cox in the attorney general's office and the new good governor, Rick Snyder, because we're going to get our gun rights back in Michigan. They're not, they're not terrible in Michigan, but there's a lot of room for improvement. And because I spend my entire hunting season up in the good winter water wonderland of Michigan, of my home state, uh, I want to make sure that we get upgrades in our gun laws and our hunting laws. So uh, be sure you're on course. You get everybody in your family, your neighbors and friends up there in Michigan to be members of the NRA and communicate with the elected officials that we have a great, great upgrade in Michigan. And now's the time to get some meaningful dialogue with Governor Snyder and the people who represent the good people of Michigan up there. Godspeed to you. Great. Thanks a lot, Ted. And I'm a big fan, and I really appreciate everything you do. And I'll see you at Pine Knob sometime this summer. Oh, you bet. Take care. Hey, God thanks, bless. Lori. All right, Lori, uh, checking in from Michigan. Whoop, hang on one second here. All right, there we go. 34 after the hour. Let's try to squeeze in uh, one more phone call. Eric is in Wisconsin. Eric, good evening. Greetings, Eric. Hey, Ted, first of all, it's a true honor to uh, actually speak with you on the phone. This well, is great. You, man. God bless the Badger State. <laughs> thank you. Um, I always told my wife for a long time that the only celebrity that I would, I would ever care to meet would be you to spend a weekend hunting with you. But uh, Well, I'm so much that... fun, it's stupid. I'm sure that everyone will tell you, if you're hunting with Ted Nugent, you'll just die of laughter every night. Exactly. I've been at your concerts, but a uh, first time with you would be great. But anyway, um, I always tell her also that we need somebody in government like yourself that stands for what you believe in. And I think right now there might be a possibility that Wisconsin might have that in Scott Walker. I believe you do, Eric. I want to tell you that I've been a huge Wisconsinite all my life. I've been rocking and rolling Wisconsin since 1965. Uh, the Amboy Duke started playing up there the first year we were formed. I've been hunting up in Wisconsin many years. I've got some great spirit blood brothers in the great state of Wisconsin. It's the home of Fred Bear and the original bow hunters. I'm a life member of the Wisconsin bow hunters, and Scott Walker is a great American. But, Eric, I'm going to repeat this till you're all sick of hearing it, until we implement it and do something. Eric... Now is the time for people who believe in pragmatism, utilitarianism, logic, truth, and the Constitution in Wisconsin. You've got a man in the governor's mansion of Wisconsin who respects we the people and respects the American way. Now is the time to turn up the heat. Scott Walker needs your help. Scott Walker needs your support and your voice. And Scott Walker already represents the good people of Wisconsin. Now he's got to hear from the good people of Wisconsin so we can get better hunting regulations. We can better manage the wolves and the coyotes and the bears that are destroying your white-tailed deer herd. we got to get these uh, regulations cleaned up so that we can encourage recruitment and get more people to enjoy the great Wisconsin tradition of hunting, fishing, and trapping. Eric, today is the day. For good people of Wisconsin to unite, because you have a great man with huge cojones in, yep, the, huge. in the capital of in Madison. Now is the time to unite. God bless and good luck up there. Hey, one last thing. Did the spoon make Michael more, more fat? Say that again. <laughs> Did the spoon make more fat? <laughs> All I can tell you. Is, is if you got a guy like Michael Moore, the reject of Michigan, coming up to Wisconsin to represent the communists, you know you're on the right track. Because <laughs> right. that's exactly what happened. Michael Moore stood with the American Communist Party in Madison. Perfect. Declared war. Said this was war. 
Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, we're going to take a, a quick time out. Last of the hour, Ted. When we come back, more phone calls, more talkbacks, more emails, more tweets, more Facebook posts, more of everything. If you want to talk with Ted Nugent, we've got a way for you to do so. Keep it right here. There is more Cam and Company coming up right after this on NRANews.com and Sirius XM Patriot. I got an email for you, Ted, from sure. uh, Patrick, who says, uh, Ted, last year, Cam wrote me the greatest letter explaining my tardiness to work because I had to do my civic duty of uh, civic duty of voting. Would you be willing to write me a note excusing my absence from work so I can attend the NRA annual meeting? Of course I would. <laughs> Cam- I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have an arm wrestling session with your boss if I have to. <laughs> well, that's very important. I, you know, between now, I, I guess we'll calculate after I get off the air with you tonight, Cam. I'm, I also want to say once again thank you to all the TedNugent.com talkbackers. They're on there right now raising a lot of hell. And I do want to remind people that even though I come on here to celebrate and promote and enthuse, uh, all activism for Second Amendment rights. I really do believe that my music, remember last year before the annual meetings, I created this I Am the NRA song. I really live the activist life. I am constantly in communication with elected officials all across this nation. I'm fighting hard to get the wolf delisted with the different organizations. That's very important. It should be right at the top of our list, along with uh, letting our elected officials know that we will not let the president infringe upon our sacred Second Amendment rights. But when I record a song like I Still Believe, uh, I'll have the lyrics up, and I'll get them to you, Cam, before next week. But there's so many different things we need to talk about between now and the NRA annuals in Pittsburgh at the end of uh, April and the first day of May. Mm -hmm. I do want to encourage everyone that while I'm on Cam and Company for the next month or so, do everything you can to take a little time off and go to Pittsburgh. We've been setting attendance records at the annual NRA meetings since the well for the last eight years that I've been doing my presentations, I talked to Chris Cox and he said, Isn't it a coincidence that since you started raising a lot of hell in the media across the country that we started setting attendance records at the NRA? Now I'm not taking all the credit for it, but the point is I'm just a guitar player and I'm doing everything I can. We all have to do everything we can do individually to once again set an attendance record in Pittsburgh because like uh, Scott expressed from Michigan, I was all excited to let the the corrupt uh, power abusers in our government let them know they're not taking our guns. And like uh, Lori in Michigan made the statement, and everybody always celebrates that we will make a stand. Do not underestimate, my friends. Write this down. Imprint this on your psyche. When we set an attendance record at the NRA annual meetings, there is not a politician on the face of the earth that doesn't notice that, doesn't step back, take a deep breath, and update their evaluation of the gun vote in America. Cam, I am convinced, though we need to be activists every day of our lives to some degree, Mm -hmm. schools, the church, the workplace, our elected officials, but when we all come together at the NRA annual meetings, it is a sucker punch upside the noggin of everybody in America who might think they can compromise our Second Amendment rights and ban this bullet and ban this magazine and ban this type of gun and reduce access to firearms and one gun a month and cop killer bullets nonsense and Saturday night special nonsense and the Sarah Brady's and all these clowns out there who would disarm us and force us to be helpless. They notice when there's a record attendance at the NRA and it shuts them up. Let's shut them up again this year by setting another attendance record. It's going to be tough. The economy is tough. Yep. People are struggling. I know that. But I'm going to encourage people every week I'm on with Cam, cut a corner somewhere. Find a place where you go to reach for something you're going to buy, and you go, I don't really need that, but I'll get a, I'll get a hotel room in Pittsburgh. I swear to God, there is no louder voice to stop anyone who would dare infringe upon our Second Amendment rights than when we set an attendance record at the NRA annual event. 
make a note of that, and let's do it again this year. Amen. All right. Uh, let's go back to the phones. Actually, we've got a uh, special caller here on line one from out in Los Angeles. It's uh, Patrick Kilpatrick. How you doing, Patrick? Hello, Kim. Hello, Ted. How Patrick, Godspeed, my friend. Happy uh, uh, California springtime to you, my friend. It's an honor to talk to you, and well said, well articulated, Ted. Thank you. As always, and you're more than a guitar player, you're a cultural icon and uh, an enduring individualist and a uh, great spokesman for everything that we hold dear. Thank you, sir. I take that to heart. Well, it's great. Thank you for having me on. Well, we're at it again out here in Hollywood. Um, June 11th, the Hollywood Second Hollywood Celebrity Sporting Plays Invitational, an event that was totally came into being to do exactly what you're talking about from deep within the image factory out here, the global image factory. And, and I, I'm happy to say the last one was a smashing success. And we're this time more prizes, more honored uh, military people, more shooters, more uh, an exquisite course, Oak Tree Gun Club, more organic wild meat food, um, uh, just a, uh, a great event we're planning, and I'm really looking forward to it. And we've been absolutely astounded by the the uh, response we've gotten from it out here. It's yep. sort of take, taking the 21st century take on the Charlton Heston shoot and projecting it into the, the new century. Yeah, well, Patrick, a salute to you, man. God bless you. You are indeed doing God's work at a time where it's more important than ever. And what I want all the listeners to realize, what Patrick puts together, what he's doing in June 2nd, is a huge celebration of shootist shooting and guns galore in Los Angeles. This is beautiful. You are, my friend, a ballistically coefficient Trojan horse in the enemy's camp. But it's important to note, Patrick, you don't get resistance, do you? There is a great pro-gun mentality along all across California and all across this country that you represent in a visible fashion in this, at this annual event. And uh, this is one of the greatest relationships with the public, known as public relations, that's called PR. This is one of the greatest PR coups in the history of the shooting sports. So from all of us out here in the heartland, God bless you for doing it in L.A. Well, it's my privilege, Ted. I was so sick of people thinking that everybody here in Hollywood was upside down. And uh, it's June 11th, and uh, I June don't 11th, know. okay. June 11th, HollywoodSportClays.com. HollywoodSportClays.com. There's massive gifting. We've got all kinds of tactical and outdoor people. We do have a lot of fishing and archery things handled by my dear friend Tim Case handles the archery. Um, so it's a full spectrum uh, um, Trojan horse, as you say. That's really terrific. Right in front, um, we 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 really endeavor to get more A-list celebrities out there involved. We've had wonderful sponsors, Ithaca Shotgun and Smith and Wesson, and. A lot of great people come on board, literally dozens of them, more than I can uh, say here. Um, and uh, let's see. We, Patrick, we really is, it, try, is it, to, try to give it a California feel. You know, Patrick, there's is, a, it, is it Hollywood a, Sport Clay or Hollywood Sporting Clays? Hollywood Sport, singular, HollywoodSportClays.com. HollywoodSportClays.com. I'm going to raise some Twit and some Facebook and some TedNugent.com <laughs> hell for you, my friend. Well, thank you very much, and, and I, I hope uh, at, at minimum your son can come out. He's out here, and you know the power of the press belongs to those who own, owns one. So my film company, we leverage that presence on it as well. So um, we plan to make a dent in every aspect of the thing out here. We invite the international press in, and we've discovered friends in the culture of CNN and ABC and all of those people. It's an interesting, you know, there's a lovely woman named Barbara Lassoff who owns Spago's Restaurant deep in the heart of Beverly Hills. We had our awards ceremony there uh, a couple of months after the last event. We had 11 uh, gold engraved Ithaca shotguns on the streets of Beverly Hills, and Barbara was solidly behind us, and she's right in the pivotal uh, spoke of the Beverly Hills social world. So there's a lot of great people out here, and um, we're gathering them all to us and, and, and creating a wonderful, fun event. Um, lots of kids. We get the series regulars from Nickelodeon, 
And uh, we just got the Sons of the Anarchy cast and Ron Perlman on board. Great. That's uh, awesome. So, uh, say that again? I, I said that's awesome. Hey, Patrick, I'm, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, man, we're almost out of time here at the end of the oh, hour. Go, but uh, uh, but but I know as we get closer to June 11th, we're going to have you back on the program. I'm glad you could call in tonight. Thank you. Anything I can do to help out. And thank you very much for the work you're doing. Well, thank I'll you. see you at the convention. God bless you, Patrick. Thank you. See All you right, Pittsburgh. See you soon. Actor, Cheers. director, producer, uh, Patrick Kilpatrick checking in. Now, we've got one more quick call that I want to get to, uh, Ted, from sure. Chris uh, right there in Waco, Texas. Chris, good evening. Greetings, Chris. Hey, good evening. Uh, Ted, I was calling to thank you. You donated some venison. You whacked them, stacked them, donated it uh, to Scott Becker, and used it at night uh, at a legacy outfitter meeting to, to feed about uh, 75, 80 men. That was my well, pleasure. I want to thank you for that, and uh, I'm also an NRA member. My son's a junior NRA member, and uh, I tell you what, the, the times we are building in the outdoors, spending together, are just invaluable. Well, Chris, so, God bless everybody. Tell them a big salute from all the NRA and the Nugent family for Legacy Outfitters. What a great charity. What a great bunch of uh, volunteers you have there. I'm proud to be a part of that and proud to be a fellow Wacoian with you, my friend. Well, thank you, sir. I want to tell you that personally. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks so man. much, Chris. Right. Appreciate the uh, phone call. All right, 53 after the hour at Twitter.com uh, on block uh, uh, says, uh, at Ted Nugent, thanks for the nudge. Just sent an email to my state reps. And on Facebook, on uh, NRA News uh, Facebook page, Mike checking in says, uh, I am a new dad holding my three-day-old baby girl right now. As she gets older, what is the best way to get her involved in the shooting sport safely? And at what age is a good age to start, Ted? Well, obviously, we talk about this a lot. I've written uh, extensively about this in my book, God, Guns, and Rock and Roll. But gentle, slow, and easy. You want to start with uh, no noise and no recoil. Uh, my kids were all starting to shoot when they were three and four years old using pellet rifles and good old Daisy Red Rider BB guns uh, in a safe environment with reactive targets at close range. But, but once you get them into real guns, make sure it's a simple 22. I always recommend a bold action like the little chipmunks and the different little youth 22s that are out there using CB caps that are real quiet but still always emphasizing ear protection and eye protection. And again, real close range. But that no noise and no recoil, I believe, is critical so that they become gently introduced to it with no fear factor, no flinching, and nothing that makes them uncomfortable. The and only time we'll ever hear Ted Nugent say no noise. Yeah, well, it is the only time. <laughs> hey, Ted, the music means, unfortunately, we're out of time, but thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. We'll talk to you in a week. See you in a week. God bless my All friend. All right. Thank you, sir. Uncle Ted joining us here on Cam & Co.